Alrighty, so what we're looking at today is a method of delaying your tracking data. So the reason you would want to do this is because um, sort of getting video into Unreal inherently has a delay because it has to transfer from your SDI, Blackmagic or AGA card over to Unreal and then displaying the graphics card. Everything has an inherent delay to it. So what we're going to be doing today is ch checking out how we can, um, I guess, add a delay to the tracking data because the tracking data has the lowest delay of anything because otherwise that would make you throw up in VR. So people have worked very hard to make sure there is no delay on that. Um, so we're going to look at how to introduce a delay in that so that um, we can get our camera movement uh, or the video input movement to match up with our controller input. Um, so here we go. Oh, took a screenshot. And now it's upside down. There we go. There we go. Alright, so we just have our regular camera movement. Um, you'll notice none of the smoothness methods work. My really unsteady hand. Wait, there we go. Yeah, you'll notice none of the smoothness methods work um, as I've turned them all off. So when you do your camera, when you're trying to track a real life camera, you want you don't want a smoothness method because you want the exact camera movement and so smoothness method changes that. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to, to make sure you turn off any sort of image or stabilization in the camera um, or at least experiment with it on and off because that will obviously change the movement of the image compared to what the tracker is trying to track. So make sure that is off and smoothness in this is off before you go ahead. Otherwise, you're going to get some, it's just going to always mismatch. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, we're essentially going to store our positions in an array and then read back from that array sort of in a delayed fashion. So it's quite easy. So um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, we're going to make a transform out of our... Here we go, our track data, and I'm just gonna unplug these. No, thank you, no, thank you, like so. So uh, you would ins input any sort of offset you wanna do between the two of these, like that. And I may make a video about, I'll probably make a video about doing offset uh, shortly. So um, yeah, you, that's where you wanna stick it in there. And so now that we have a transform, we're gonna do, uh, yeah, so we're going to have to set two variables. Um, first is our tracking delay. Like that, uh, which we are going to change into a integer. And next we need an array of transforms, which is going to be our track positions. Uh, and so we're going to click and change it to a transform. And we're going to click next to it here and turn it into an array like that. Next we are going to, uh, so we're going to go off the event tick and for the moment disconnect the relative transform. So this will work in the blueprint camera and the regular camera. Um, technically it'll work in the VR camera but I would recommend against it because that's silly and there's no re reason to do it in that. Um, so we want a set array element. Here we go like so. So we're going to tick size to fit. The item is going to be our transform. The tracking delay is going to be our index and the tracked positions array is going to be the array. Uh, we are then going to use our set relative transform like so. I'm going to, can I um, recombine struct pin? There we go. So we're going to get a copy from the array. So uh, to keep things, you can just reuse this one up here. I'm going to do a bunch of them just to try and keep things neater. So if we could get a copy like so and drag it into the new transform like that, we can leave the it at zero. Uh, and then lastly, we want remove index. Remove index, uh, and we're going to use the array again, like so, and we're also going to leave this at zero, like so. Compile, save. So what's going to happen is the event tick is going to fire. 
it's going to go through here to the set array element. It's then going to get our device position and orientation and put it into an array. And the number in the array is going to be our tracking delay. It is then going to set the relative transform of the tracked position in the array at number zero. And then it's going to remove the one at number zero. And then it's going to fire again. Same thing. It'll keep going through. And so if we set this tracked delay to two, for example, then our first tracked position is going to be two event ticks away from starting. Because obviously items at number zero and one are going to be empty. So as this goes through, this is going to take the first one, it'll then remove it. It'll then take the second one, which is still empty and remove it. And then on the third event tick file, it will take the position and orientation from the first one, if that makes sense. And so that's how we get a delay. And so simply entering a number into this tracking delay, that is how many frames we want to delay the track by. So the other issue is how do we control Unreal? Because if we have a look, show FPS, we're running at whatever the hell that is, 40, 50, 60, 50. That's a bit hard to predict. <laughs> and it changes a lot. So what, look, now it's a hundred and something. So what we also wanna do is limit Unreal's frame rate to a fixed value. Um, and to do that, we're going to go all the way back over to our event begin play. Um, and because I'm sick of sticking things at the end of that, I'm going to do a then node. Okay. I cannot remember what it's called, flow control. Sequence, sequence, that's what I want. Yeah, that's what we want. So you can just use a sequence like this so you don't always have to put things at the end of things. Um, so we're gonna do all that and then, so we're going to, if you type console, we're just going to, so there is a console command to limit Unreal's frame rate. If we have a look, it's going to be, it's t.max fps at the top, fps. Uh, and then you just type a number, let's say 24 and hit enter and look at that. Unreal is at 24 and does a pretty good job because I've got a powerful PC at remaining at 24 frames a second. Doesn't that look cinematically, it actually looks horrible for a video game with input, because it looks like there's a delay. Anyway. I think if you do set it at zero, yeah, it'll go back to whatever it was. All right, so that is the command we're gonna use. So it was t.maxfps. Um, now set it to a value that is divisible by your camera frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24, um, you can set it to 24, to 48, to 96, someone has a calculator, I'm the only one in this room. Um, so I'm just going to set it to 48. Uh, apparently I'm not going to set it to anything. Like so. So now, save, when we run the game, it's going to immediately go to 48 frames a second, and... Uh, we only set eight frames. It, it's going to be, you're not actually going to be able to tell there's a delay because you can't see the controller, but I, I assure you there is a delay. If we set this to something, set this to 12, save, play. Yeah, now that's dodgy. <laughs> Whee! It, it feels weird, but yeah. So that's going to line up your track. So uh, how do you figure the delay? Um, that one's pretty easy as well. Um, grab a phone. Most modern smartphones now have like a slow motion mode. Uh, and grab your camera, set it all up, hit play with a no delay. So zero. Uh, have the camera still and playing in the game. Record a slow motion video and then just like 
bump your camera some extreme movement like pan it whip pan it or something like that um, and then simply count the delay between when unreal starts to whip pan and when your input video actually starts to whip pan and count how many unreal frames is between that and the camera start moving and, and that i would go as your base tracking delay and you can start entering numbers you know you can start fiddling with it and so the delay is probably what is going to make the biggest difference for whether a track looks a track sticks so to speak you know so that's it's the most important part in compositing is getting a good camera track and so you know getting a good camera track and making sure it, it lines up and the delay is correct so that they're moving in tandem is very important to getting a realistic looking track. So the other thing to note is do not use drop frame. So that is, so in certain devices, usually it's NTSC, as far as I know, PAL over here in Oz doesn't do it. Um, but they'll say they record at 60 frames a second, but they're actually recording at 59.98. Or they'll say they're doing 24, but they're actually doing 23.97. Or thir they say they're doing 30, but they're doing 29.97. You know, do not do that because Unreal cannot do drop frames. Unreal cannot do interlaced and it cannot do drop frames. And so what you end up with is a track that slowly starts off being identical and then slowly creeps away from you because Unreal is doing full frames while your camera is doing drop frames. And so that's something to check because some camcorders and cameras and stuff output through their SDI or HDMI differently to what they output in their, um, what their recording is set to. So I'd make sure, check that because uh, that's going to, to quote South Park, I guess you're going to have a bad time. Alrighty. But other than that, that is how you add a delay to your track. And, you know, and you can get very accurate delay. There's no guessing or it's very easy to use. You just type a frame number and that's how many it delays by.